Joellen is here with us. Super awesome. All right, question time. You ready? Who here has ever, ever, maybe once in their lifetime felt scared? Does anybody back there I'm raising up their hands? Are there a couple of them? They've been scared too? Wait, who out here has been scared before? Anybody? Whoa! Okay, so if, if being scared is something that everybody feels sometimes, what are some things that we can do when we feel scared? Anybody have ideas? What do you do when you feel scared? What do you do? Snuggling up with stuffies. I think that is pretty awesome. Yeah? Hide underneath the blankets, but not your eyes. Very good, so you can still see. Yes. Can do. Do you visit with maybe hang out with an adult that you like? Spending time with adults that you like? Snuggies, cozy blankets. You know what I do sometimes when I get scared? What? I like to sing. I like to sing when I get scared. And I sing songs that make me feel strong or make me feel hopeful. The one that we started our worship with today is one of the ones I like to sing. Do you know, do you remember what we were singing? This little light of mine. Sing it loud. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light.
folks when you're feeling scared at home? It's a good song. You might want to give it a try. And if anybody ever tells you that you can't sing or you shouldn't sing, I heard another story this week from somebody who was told when they were your age that they shouldn't sing. If anyone ever, ever, ever tells you that, you look them straight in the face and you say, my pastor says, God loves my voice no matter what. And you keep singing. Okay? Is that a deal? All right. Let's pray. Here we go. Loving God. Thank you, Thank you for loving us. For loving us. When, we get scared, when we get scared, help us, help us to do things, do things to feel strong. To feel strong. Amen. Amen. I am the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So last week, we began our journey through chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew. And does anyone remember how I referred, who was here last week, and some of you weren't, and that's totally okay. I just want that out. Does anyone remember how I referred to those verses as cross-stitch verses, right? So these are verses that are so familiar to us that perhaps we make them into cross-stitch patterns. Right? And, and in some ways, we think of these as containable verses because we can make them pretty and we can put them behind some glass and leave them on our wall. But perhaps also these kinds of verses are more than something we hang on our walls. Right? So we looked last week at Micah and the call of what the world is. And then we looked at the Beatitudes and the promise of the kingdom of God. And just like in cross-stitch, where there are two pieces to each stitch, we have these two pieces that we hold in tension, the world as it is, and the world as it is promised. Our cross-stitched verses. And what is this, again, in sign language? Love. It is also an X which is the first letter in the word Christos, and it gives us our cross. And so these cross-stitched verses that can stitch the cross into our hearts and through our lives are powerful when we let them come off of the cloth and into our souls. And this week we continue with Matthew 5, this whole chapter which we hear frequently. And we get another section of this text. You are salt. Don't lose your saltiness. Be salty. You are light. So shine. Verses that are very familiar. I use them as my ordination text. They are a foundational set of verses for who I am 
and how I understand myself to be as a called and ordained pastor. To be salt and to be light is what I strive to do. And this is a cross-stitched verse in my life. Now, this week, though, there's also another section that follows the pretty part. Anyone notice that section? Because whenever there's gospel and hope, oftentimes there is also law. Because we live in a law and gospel faith. And we stitch the two together. And again, we find our cross. So this week, as we continue through the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, we are hearing the law gospel tension. One of the pieces that I think is very, very important to make certain that we understand as we head into this, and as we continue in this year where we will be hearing from the Gospel of Matthew a lot, is what the word righteous means in this scripture. So what does the word righteous mean to you? What do you think of when you hear the word righteous? I am better than you. What's that? Upstanding. Upstanding. Okay. What's that? Right with God. Right with God. So there's something about something about being right with God that goes along with righteous. Yeah. So in our language and in our world, oftentimes righteous gets kind of tied up with self-righteous. And that better than you kind of stuff starts to leak out. And, and we have a hard time with the word. But in the Gospel of Matthew, the understanding of righteous is less about being perfect or being good. But it is in order to be good with God. It is more about finding how do we be in good relationship with one another. And in being in proper relationship with one another, we are in proper relationship with God. That's what righteous means. So when Jesus, and John, Jesus comes to John, and the very first words that Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew are with John the Baptist of the Jordan. And John's saying, no, 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 no. You are way cooler than me. You should be doing this baptism, not me. And Jesus' first words in the Gospel of Matthew are, This is how it should be for all righteousness to be fulfilled. You have to baptize me for us to be in right relationship with one another. That's what this is. For me to enter into this ministry, understanding who and how I am in relationship with other people, I need to be baptized by you. Doesn't matter what you think of me. It's about, it's about right relationship and understanding how we fit together. So in the Gospel of Matthew, sometimes we can get a lot of stuff that sounds like, if you don't feed the poor, you are not in good relationship and you are awful bad. If you do not do the works, you are bad, right? We get this works righteousness stuff that is really easy to trip up on in the Gospel of Matthew. And we hear passages like we heard today. Not one stroke, not even like a single stroke of the pencil of the law will disappear before the end, before these things will come to be, right? Like the law is sticking around. I'm going to give you grace, and I'm going to love you no matter what, but you still got to do the stuff. The tricky, tricky part for us is to understand that we don't do the stuff in order to get God's love. That's not righteousness. That's not proper relationship. What is righteousness is you are salt. You are light. You are these things. Grace, beloved children, you can preserve this world. You can keep it safe and palatable. You can feed beyond what people think is possible. 
because you are salt and you will keep things well. You are light. In times where there is darkness, in times where things are scary, in times where things are hard, you are already light in the darkness, who you are and how you are, the gifts that you are, everything about you. You are light, beautiful ones of God. Grace upon grace upon grace. Now that you know this, go out in the world and be salt and be light. Don't just hide inside of a church building and shine in this space. Go and be salt and be light in this world. That is how we are in good relationship with God and good relationship with each other. And that is how the kingdom of God happens. Because the kingdom of God is already here. We just have to make it be here. It's not that you're earning your way into the kingdom of God. You're creating it here on this planet, right now, right here, every single minute of every single day. And if we don't go and do the things, then, then the kingdom of God isn't going to happen. So no, we're not going to make it in. Because we've got to do the stuff that we get to do. Because we are salt. And we are light. Our Isaiah text today is kind of like the Micah, right? Where, where last week I, I kind of brought the Micah out as if we were a pouty teenager. We can't do anything to make you happy, can we? Nothing we ever do is good enough for you. Great. Right. So, so this week, we kind of have the same thing going on in Isaiah. Like, look at how much I suffer for you. I'm not eating. I'm so hungry. And God is looking at the teenager going, mm -hmm. do you think this is what I, the fast that I want? You think I want you miserable? and whiny and arguing with each other and taking the day off but paying someone else to do your work but paying them a quarter of the wages to do the work while you take the day off? If you really think this is what I'm wanting from you? What does God say is the fast that God wants in this Isaiah? And again, I've got a different translation with me, but what does God say God wants in this kind of a fast? You've got the scripture sheets. Lose the bonds of injustice. What was that one? Give your food to other people. Give your food to other people. Break the yoke. Bring in the poor. Do the things. I love you. God has said this over and over and over again to these people. I love you so much. You are nothing but my beloved children. Stop being so miserable. Go do things that make other people less miserable. That's what this is about. That is the law. Get out there and make it better. Because the gospel truth is that you can do it. I've heard messages from you this week. You've been in contact, and I've read your emails, and I've read your text messages, and I've read your Facebook messages to me, and we've had our conversations, and, and I know that there are those of you who are scared right now. And that's okay. Right? I'm scared too. But here I am, right next to you. And we are salt, and we are light, and we get to make this world into the kingdom of God. This is the promise of this cross-stitch verse, that who we are in relationship to this kingdom of God, this blessing of all these people, who we are is that we are the ones who get to make this world see it. 
We are the ones who get to make this world experience that love. This week, I want you to find something in this Isaiah passage that you can do. One small act, something tangible, and do it. And understand that if all of us do at least one small act, this world changes. The kingdom of God comes one step closer. You are salt. You are light. Hide it under a bushel. No. no. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. You can be louder. <laughs> Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No! I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Go shine, beloved children of God, with all you've got.